the property to have a reason of it? Hi. Um, I didn't have the opportunity last month to defend myself against the accusations that were made by um, Anne Martinez. And Annie stood right here and called me a liar, said that I was coerced by Patsy, and she <coughs> handed you the proof, which was a letter that I had written, that shows that it's her that's misinformed you. Just by the simple addition of, of words, she added to and stated that she came down, you know, cussing, and she did not. She, she actually, at the end, after we got an opportunity to discuss it, you know, she apologized for, for the situation. I apologized too, because it was me that was in the wrong. I had called Gina, and Gina was very kind to come down and willingly give the second signature, but it was my fault to begin with. I should have, a week ahead of time, called and, and called the county and let them know, hey, there's a reminder that, that this guy's coming, I need to check. And I should have called Patsy and let her know, county's sending the check and we're going to need this. I should have prepared it. He was setting up and I'm like, oh no, he's going to need a check. And, and then it was a panic situation. And out of that, you know, she had a really rough day and I ended up being the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. Um, which is understandable. I mean, we all have those type of days and that just happened to be one of her days. And when we finally got a chance to sit down and discuss it, we both came to an understanding, you know? This uh, is a very unfortunate situation. It should have been handled privately to begin with. And I explained that to Annie. Um, the letter that I gave to Annie wasn't for her to proofread. It, I, was, I was, at the point in time, I was very upset and I was kind of looking for justification for my, for my anger and I couldn't get to the person at the time for, circumstances, uh, she was, you know, extremely busy, budget, so on and so forth, various other things. And so, I, you know, I was writing her a letter, and I just didn't want, to, I didn't want to overstate things, and, and that's why, you know, she was a witness. I did not, in hindsight, if I would have known that she would have taken it to the paper, and, and I had no idea. And I do apologize that this was even brought to your attention, but it really bothers me that she stood up here and called me a liar. I never did lie. I never denied that it happened. Patsy never denied that it happened. It was just a matter of the, the wording. I mean, she stated that Patsy came in there in front of 30 kids saying the F word, and she did not. And in the letter that Annie handed you, it shows the exact words that Patsy used, and it shows that she did not use that type of language in front of anybody. So, if anything, she proved to you by giving you that letter that she was the one falsifying the information. And through her exaggerations, it discredits her entire statement. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. We'll go to uh, Boston. <coughs> well, so I'm not in the 504 Hessel. I'd like to mention some problems from the street. At the corner of West 5th and Hessel is this large hole. It's been repaired by Ford Sand in it for the last couple of months. And the hole has increased and the water is running under the pavement and coming out down the hill. That needs to be fixed. Gravel's not going to do it. Them little red cones has been there. I'm sure the police have seen it for quite a while. And it is a hazard. And eventually, it costs the city more money to fix the road. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Diane? Yeah, it's very shag. It's only because my name was dragged into all of this that I'm even here. And it's something that was unfortunate between two professional people that has gotten way blown out of proportion. They handle it amongst themselves, very uh, like adults, and and it's just it, it went way beyond what it ever should have been. I was there. There was no foul language. It was unfortunate. It was just a circumstance, and I'm sorry that this has been so made such a big deal of. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
but I was there and it was certainly did not go down the way it was portrayed in the paper. And I'm only speaking because my name was dragged into it. Thank you, dear. Thank you. We'll go to item uh, five, consent agenda, A approval of minutes, B approval of staff recommendation to report, C approval of consent <laughs> Questions on the minutes? And then questions on the agenda. I see, which which uh, minutes do you have? Uh, minutes of uh, July 31st. Okay. the last paragraph. Nancy Lord stated that she was sorry to bring up old issues, but it seems as though you people not leave me alone to do my job, especially you, Mr. Brewer. You start issues and you have your son come to question and follow up with it. I did not have my son do anything. I may ask him to do something, but I never asked him to come down here. The tape recording and the video of that meeting says Patsy that she had an issue with my son coming down and looking at the minutes. Is that what was in the minutes? No. I did not have an issue with that. I know their public information and I don't have an issue with it. I probably had an issue with them coming down and questioning me uh, the, the uh, uh, concerns he had with his dad. What's the issue I have now on the agenda? I see people submitting various items for the agenda and it's placed on the agenda. Now I submitted an item for the agenda. But where's that in that conference? I submitted an item for the point agenda. Of, point, point of order, Joe. Point of information. Point of order. Where's, point of information and agenda. for the record. I'm going to tell you again, Joe. Point of order. There's nothing here on the consent agenda we can't talk about. I'm just trying to be, keep a meeting in order. I don't want you to get in trouble with Attorney General, so just uh, keep to the keep I to want the, to make a point of information and for the record. Not, not this to not the Joe. attorney. Town okay. attorney. Joe, you're gonna have to stop right here. I'm you gonna know have to stop. The Davis if you can't stop, is, I'm gonna have to yeah. ask you to leave, Joe. If you can't stop, I'll keep you this. Know order. The Man Davis Act okay. Is. Uh sir, go ahead and escort Joe out of the meeting. Are you, are you, no, no way. No way. Come on. Come on. Well, that's what that I is want. point of order. Hey, you're going to be escorted out, sir. If you don't keep, we want order in this room. That's all we're asking for. We're, we're asking for order. That's all we're asking for. Be professional about it. Exactly. And you, th that's enough because we're not in the agenda. There's an agenda. That's what I'm trying to tell Joe. We get in trouble with Attorney General. Joe knows that. I don't want him to get in trouble. We're trying to keep order. Okay. Point of information on the agenda. Is that legal, Mr. Attorney? Mayor, council members, as you're aware, the mayor is the one that runs the meeting. The item that's before you right now is the matter that's set forth on consent agenda. And that is basically for approval or those matters that you wish to discuss individually. Uh, council member Brewer, I don't know specifically what you were talking about because I'm not aware of what you're talking about, but I can tell you that if you wanted to address that issue, perhaps the call to the public may have been a more appropriate forum to have raised that issue. Okay. One more question, if you don't mind. No, go ahead. Do you know what the Mandamus Act is? There is no such thing as a Mandamus Act. Writ. 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 Mandamus is set forth in the Arizona Revised Statutes. Basically, it talks about basically a most, it is basically getting a legislative official compelled to do a certain act. And that's what I want to bring to your attention because it's going to be filed because it Town mayor refuses to follow the town ordinance that says he has run these meetings according to Robert's Rules of Order, and he refuses to give us any documentation on the financial reports. No receipt whatsoever. There's all the. She's got them. She does not give them to us in our packet so we can look at them. He's supposed to be given to us 
the Thursday before the meeting. There they are, right there. You can look at them. Oh, definitely, right here. I'm through the. Are you going to suspend the meeting while I look at all these guns? Do I take a break? I don't I didn't think so. We can take a break so. and you can look at it, Joe. There's no problem. All the receipts are there. No, I made, made my point. Okay, so do you have any other questions? <laughs> Dude, yeah, public works report. I just received it right now. Uh, install an AC unit. Where did it install the AC unit? At? In uh, in Chocan, I think? Yes, sir. It's 337, Highway 77. Any other questions by Council? Yes, Mayor, I'd like to comment that on call to the public, when the town clerk requested to speak, she wrote down here and she commented that Mrs. Whitcomb stated that she, along with some auditors, had spent hours going through the town's financial report, uh, something about the $60,000 had reappeared. I never said, and it is reported, I never said I had some auditors. I said I have a friend who has done auditing and you know, he pointed out some areas that would be red flags. So I'd like to have that corrected. And also, um, I know we've discussed this in the past, and uh, the clerk has stated that they try to, and I don't know who interprets the recordings, but she says that she tries to be as accurate as possible. These are legal documents, so I expect her to be very accurate. And if they need to listen to the tapes over again, then maybe they should. That's all I have to say. I will. Thank you. If no further questions. I do have questions. Uh, payment approval. Uh, okay. 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 Payment approval report. Page yeah. yeah. five. Go down to item one 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 two nine. It's an amount of seven thousand five hundred one dollars nineteen cents. Can you tell me what that is for? We have a, a copy of that right now. Can you see what you're talking about? Yes, Cooper and Ruder. Um, Mr. Cooper, I apologize to you that you have not received uh, your, your billing. It has been approved, but he has not received his check. So with that, uh, we have that check for uh, a few months there. Okay, now we'll go down to uh, 1104 Arizona Supreme Court, $750. That is for uh, computer maintenance up at the courthouse. And you go 049069, a Terminator account for $3.83. Uh, that's correct. Someone terminated their water account and we owed them three dollars and whatever. And then you got uh, eleven zero four nine one five zero insurance for eighty one thirty two. That's correct. As you know, we reimburse our employees up to one hundred and fifty dollars per month. That employee has taken a lesser policy, costing the town less. So that's what we paid him. Seven zero four nine one five five. Another terminator account of seven nine eighty nine. Uh, that's correct. It's a, a utility account, and they shut the water off, and that was their refund. Is that the deposit? It, we take the last, the amount owed at the end of the month, and deduct it, you know, from their deposit. So that's how much their bill would be. Thank you. Any further right. questions by council? Mayor. Mayor, on the, the, the billing to my firm, um, we recently received a payment for the June legal services. Okay. It is not uncommon that during this time of the, the year, in between the funds being replenished through collection of property taxes, that basically certain professional services don't get paid to those funds become available and uh, wasn't basically wasn't an issue. You know, I just love going to council member council meetings not getting paid. You know. <laughs> Especially when the Diamondbacks are playing so bad these years, but um, but that, that's the reason that that number is that basically that's roughly that is basically a three month period. Yeah, basically, mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. 
And with that, if no further questions. So with that, you have received one month. So we're that check will be voided and and issued for two months. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go to item. Uh, I mean, I need a motion and a, a consent agenda. So I have a motion by Councilman Medina to approve the consent agenda. You have a second on that? I second. Second by Councilman Marshall. All the uh, favor motion? Thank you. Uh, roll call. Uh, Councilwoman Whitman? No. Councilman Barcelo? Yes. Councilman Gallego? Yes. Mayor Barcelo? Yes. Councilman Brewer? No. Councilman Romero? Yes. Vice Mayor Medina? Yes. Motion passes on order item 6. Open discussion and interaction on the following. Updates from NCS, Ram, and Steve. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Um, <laughs> a lot has transpired here in the last month that we'll talk about. Um, we can open it up for any questions. Uh, we're in a tight crunch here with respect to the loan funding. Um, and so uh, it's affecting the status of the grant fund. Okay, so um, that's the item one, the most critical item that's on the agenda. At last month's meeting, uh, we did apply for the WIFA loan shortly after. Um, um, that was denied and basis on the, uh, the too many notes on the financial audits. So I'm not close to the financial data that we submitted. Um, and, and so uh, unfortunately, that doesn't look like a path that's going to move enough. So, um, we have been working with the Wells Fargo as we leadership with the town for a private municipal loan to, to fill the balance uh, for the water treatment plant. Um, in addition to that, uh, the DOH uh, gave us a tight window two weeks ago to get the funding in place with the loan funding. So um, uh, unfortunately, we've been focusing on a lot of the grants opportunities uh, we, we have been asking when is the deadline for the loan uh, from DOH. I haven't, didn't get an answer, you know, until they sent the letter two weeks ago that we had two weeks uh, to get that in place. So um, at this point, uh, you know, with the WIFA not being in the picture, it's the municipal loan getting a letter of commitment in place as soon as possible from them as the co-funding agency. Um, and. And so the bullets are there. I can take any questions on what's transpired between last month and this month now. Uh, Steve's been working very hard. Uh, I've been working very hard. Patsy's working very hard to um, meet the requirements from DOH uh, for the co-funding uh, for the project. Um, if you know if that, uh, I guess we had a discussion earlier with the attorney. We, we would need a special meeting to then. Uh, agree for, you know, the co-funding loan. Okay. And we would need that by Monday to move forward. Um, so that's probably the most critical item here that I have to present um, uh, to the council with respect to the water treatment project. I, may I comment on something? <clears throat> we, uh, Ron is correct. AOH has really pushed us to the limit on this. Uh, we had no idea. There, we knew there was a deadline, but we could not obtain that information from ADOH. Um, so at this point, we, as we have, as he said, we have been going after grant funding. Um, we still have uh, uh, Arizona. I mean the uh, the ADO. What is the oh, USDA? USDA uh, that we're still looking at. Now, if the council approves the loan. That fund, grant funding, I think, is allowable to repay the loan. So uh, any money that we may use, the, the, we may not use any of the funding, because the, all, all ADOH needs is a backup to this 223000 that we need to spend, and we need to spend it pretty quick. And what was the amount we needed from? Was it 300000 to Yeah, 300000 Yeah, and that's why we... 
Yeah, how come here he has 6,000? I'm just projecting, um, I projected $5 a month. Uh, or six, about six sixty a month here. It'll be based on actual, but I didn't want to say something lower to, and come back. And I always uh, err on the side of caution. It'll be okay, yeah, going a little bit on the high side. We'll have that. The um, I'll be transparent. The criticism I received at uh, Tampa BOH is for not pushing for more of the loan earlier, and I apologize for that. But we're really, you know, we're still going to pursue grants, but the schedule's gotten so compressed now, we have to focus on the loan fund. Okay, so I'll be. Uh, and I asked uh, three times in meetings, when is our timeline, uh, you know, we're smart about these things, when do we have till to switch in to get the loan approved and, and uh, you know, basically the, the fire drill's been on for two weeks to switch into a loan co-funding. That doesn't mean we're, we're not still seeking this, but the concern here is, is the, uh, the loss of the 223 co-funding if we don't get the loan funds in place. So it's, it's more critical than, especially with WIFA denying us, and, and I am getting, um, we're going to have to work through it with Wells also. There's, uh, I wasn't aware there's some statements on the financials that we're working through, and I'm hoping to work through that. Uh, we'll do what it takes, but that's posing a little bit of a challenge. Now, this WIFA application here, sort of submitted and loan funding cannot be obtained in time. Does that mean the application wasn't sent in on time? And that's why we're no, no, no. Here? They they got back and they said they uh, pretty much said because of the audits. Uh, uh, we could probably work through the audits, I think, but it may take a year or so by the time we get the funding, and that won't meet the funding deadlines. Okay, so it won't be in time to meet the goals. So I I did talk to another specialist, the uh, who, who deals financially with these things, and he says, can we work through these audit issues with WIF? And he says we can, but. By the time you get the loan approved, you know, the thing will be built by then. All these times you sit up there and talk to us, still up there and talk to us, said we've had a forgiveness. Does Wells Fargo have forgiveness? No. No, no not a debt forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, no. Thank you. Well, Ron, I still I do not understand why WIFA loan was rejected. I mean, was you're saying, okay, you said the audit, you said the stuff wasn't turned in on time. What's going on? No, it's the, it's the statements, and I, I'm uh, not intimately, we sent in uh, the audit and finance that we, we got the records from the town. Mm -hmm. It's the, there's two issues here, and I'm concerned in the long-term future, um, I think we need to get involved with, and we're going to call tomorrow with the accountants to straighten this out because we have two issues and that's going to be an issue with USDA and any federal agency for big dollars going forward is that there's statements, there's, I mean I'll just use it, negative statements, they've used stronger words with me on the prior and, and it's 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 like a bad credit score, right? you know, it, and they're just saying there's negative statements that haven't been cleared up from prior audits and they're not talking to us. And so that's the exact. So you're referring to the audit that we keep hearing that has not been done since 2010? Is that what you're referring We don't have any recent audits Audits that clear, that clear up the prior statements that, you know, that accountants are required to, to put. Okay, yeah. so there's, and when we need to, yes, and because of that, we will not consider. Uh, did we will give you any information, written information, as to why they denied this application? Um, if they did, I'd like to see it. These, these have been phone calls. Contact no written information. We, we can ask for. We can ask no for. Emails or <clears throat> no. No, we can ask for. I would love to see the written information okay. before we'll we make any that. other decisions. Okay. Thank you. We'll I, I, just, I totally agree. I just think that there's too, too many things here. The that you don't know the loan deadline. I, I just cannot understand that they would not give you a deadline and then all of a sudden if they say, "Oh, it's Monday," and I mean, you know, and now we have a, a bad credit score. We haven't had audit information. I mean, I don't know how you plan on getting us to approve a loan when we have all this, these questions that have not been answered. Um, the, no, the loan, the funding deadline for the loan, uh, we were, uh, yeah, I think our letter, uh, you know, at least I was shocked to see that there was two weeks to get that in place. Um, and so the criticism on my end is, uh, is and, and I'll shoulder that, is we should have been thinking loan since January, uh, and we've been trying to get all grant to, to well, minimize it. I totally it agree, time. because in the past I've said, you know, I thought you guys were very, very professional, 
and you've done this before, you've told us this before, and I don't know, I'm not putting the blame on you. I'm just saying that, you know, we have people that were paying quite a bit of money that need to be taking care of all this stuff so that we don't get told here at the last second, you guys have a bad credit score, we're not approving this, the deadline's who, money. Who is it that's getting paid a lot of money that should have told you this? Well, you're responsible for no. this. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. So with respect to not focusing on the loan, uh, Councilman, I'm not, that, that we've been really trying to do the most we can with grant funds to minimize the rate increase impacts. And I think it was in, in June we came back, we had the special meeting and said, let's switch to the loan. Uh, we didn't know WIFA would, uh, they generally approve, we've done a lot of WIFA loans and it hasn't been an issue. And, and uh, you know, as far as the, the issues with the derogatory statements on the audit, um, that's just something we'll have to work through. But. Um, we're willing to work through it with you, but those were items that have surfaced as we were applying for, for the loans. Um, so at this point, the private financing alternative, not to say that can't be taken out in six months with a better option, that would be the intent, but um, uh, I really feel strong that we need to move ahead to move forward, you know, to, to build a project. This is just to secure the money. It doesn't mean we have to use it, right? Now. That is correct. Right now, we're not, of, like we, we would need, a, we would need a, the follow-up would be item three. We would want a special meeting to, Before to we for the, uh, 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 we need a, a resolution okay, for the loan. Then we would need a public meeting to, to for the rate increase in the loan. I don't know about anybody else up here, but uh, as for myself, there's no way in the world that I can make an informed decision on this without the written documentation. Again, if you get it to us, we can read it, we can study it, then maybe we can do something about it. Just do you say any, don't get nowhere. Joe, hold on. Do you have any email that's in I don't. We can look at. But I will say this. <coughs> you can get that. I, I, I met yes. with with Department of Housing mm -hmm. along with Brom on, was it Monday? Monday. Monday. This was the first that I knew about all of this. Um, and we had a nice long discussion. Oh, uh, ADOT has asked that. Um, Rom, Rom's firm becomes our engineering only. I went straight over to CAG. CAG is going to be the administrators from now on. So that's going to uh, free Rom and his engineers up to be engineers and not go after the grants. We have CAG to go after that. With housing, with housing. Yes. So even though we apply for this, we might not get it. Well, we have it reserved, contingent on the the the, the, the co-funding requirement. Okay, so the, the total project was about six hundred thousand. They've got two two twenty four reserves exactly. So what we need is three hundred thousand dollars actually to complete this project. That's right. So if we wouldn't have lost about three hundred thousand dollars, would would be clear, would be okay. Yeah, that's what that's what the. But and we we've been trying to do it all grant well, and, and that's and we're still going after you. Don't get me wrong. No, we're still going after the USDA. There, that's a, still a pot of money that's there that we're not you know. And so uh, three months from now that could be. And, and this, let me talk a little about the schedule on this. This would start in December fifteenth, uh, using the uh, DOH funds for the purchase of the equipment. Okay. Then in about March we would bid the construction of the building to put the equipment in. Okay. So there is time there, uh, and, and, and I think Kathy even told you, said she called you, and we talked about that, that um, but, but I really do not want to lose, uh, they're just, the co-funding timeline has been crunched on this. So, uh, and that's where housing was, was you know, and I shoulder the blame, and I accept responsibility that we should have been thinking more loan. But the timelines, in our defense, we asked, when do we need to have the loan in place? I asked three times and I was never, so they've also shifted some project personnel, and so this was all of a sudden, uh, you know, I'm told you know, two weeks to, to to go loan instead of grant. And the WIFA was, a, and they knew we were going WIFA, but that was also about the time we got the news. Uh, and WIFA really, we've done 30 WIFA loans, okay, and, and um, because, and I think as a town and as your engineer, we will work to straighten out these financials, okay, with the help of the attorney and the accountant. That's something that needs to be done as we go forward with USDA and other agencies and future DOH projects. I just think that's a, a clean bill of health is needed to get these. And current financial statements and, 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 and even if there's, and, and I spent a lot of time with the financial folks, even if there's um, 
some issues with it. They just need to be explained clearly what they were and, and why they were. Okay, and it won't necessarily affect enterprise funds or revenue funds, but 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 right now there's just statements on there that a uh, uh, WIFA looks at and just they're they're not a, they're not accredited for. And, and we just need to all work together to, to sort through that. Um, and, the, and those and this is all you know happened in the last month, so it's not something we've been in. You know, we're withholding or anything. Like, we're here talking openly with you all about these. But uh, there's an immediate urgency that we, we need to secure this loan funding uh, to prevent the risk of losing the funding. We have a question over there. Uh, Ron, my Brian Blair, just a very quick question. Um, in your professional opinion, do you think it would be better for the people of Mammoth to resolve the issues of the outstanding audits before you progress forward trying to acquire new loans and put the town further in debt? I just, I, 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 I just, I if there was no question. grant funding at the honest answer, if there was no grant funding at stake, that I would say that, yes. That'd be the best route. I would say yes if there was no grant funding at stake. Now, um, the, the other, I guess, along, I'll just address that question. That if there's uneasiness in proceeding with Lona or the, you know, or lack of information or the time is, I mean. Um, <coughs> The other option is to straighten that out and then go to USDA with the, with the whole package. But you know, that what he's asking, that's out of the town's hand. Right. Okay, when the previous administration left, they did not leave documents so the audit can be completed. So that's where we're stuck. Our audit, when Patsy took over, is done. But they won't proceed on that one until they're trying to get the other one. We're already told, we're ready for the audit. Do our audit. They, right, Patsy? And he's working with the Auditor General on this very issue. And it's affecting us, like, on this. Well, well, you know, we, we like well, to have it done. And so you're having well, a hard time finding historical records to complete past audits, is what you're saying? Yeah. Um, and well, that, when the only reason that I asked that, Ron, was because I see here that on um, item number C on old business that you're going to ask for a water rate increase. So now the town of Mammoth is going to have to come out of pocket more to, to, to help. Well, let me, yeah, let me keep talking. But the other option here, and this is what I did, mean, Financial folks said, when there's issues like this, how you approach it is we just break out <coughs> the enterprise funds separately, okay, and present the financial information that way. So there is a way around this and the audits, how we present the recent financial data, and that's to present all the enterprise funds, what the revenues are, and, and, and that's how we can get around this with the WIFA or USDA or any of these folks. But so, in answering his question, we knew from the very beginning the water rates were going to go up to maintain this unit. Right. I've thrown out the $6 number for, I was asked that last year, so I, I think I've been throwing that number out for about a year now. Okay, so I think that was the item last August, it was asked. Um, I forget my answer. Uh, no, 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 that's fine. So I, I saw that number. I, I guess my concern is I, I, I'm focused on doing everything possible to, to not losing the 225 grant and putting it towards the project. Okay, that's been my focus to serve the town. And this is the best option, then go to USDA immediately. And, and, and then when those checks come out, I, I think. Um, but if we don't secure the money right now, there's no use of going to USDA. There, there is. There still is. OK, the, and that option would be, uh, can I talk about that? Or? Yes. That option would be, we, 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 uh, um, uh, obviously, this is a joint decision between the community and the town is, is is, is work on the financials, uh, you go to USD immediately, but they have what they call a letter of conditions, and then we go to them for 1.5 million, the whole program, okay? And, and, and then get them to fund 75% of it, and then use either, you know. So, so there is an option, uh, and that's a, a very good option. Also, it would, uh, you're right, you know, I think we definitely need to get these financial thing wheel engage ourselves in it to to get that resolved because I, I think even with them we're not going to get very far with the financial issues. So I may, I may be wrong but when you stood up there in previous meetings when we first started talking about this RO system there the free people kept asking the question is this going to raise our rates is going to cost uh, cost us more money and the answer was no because we're not going to be using salt anymore and so that's going to the, say the net, yes, the net per increase will be less. Now, the six dollars of water rates last August, you can check them out. I said that, but the net cost will be lower. 
because we won't be spending money on these things. Yeah, I think he brought that up, Joe. He brought about the coolers, yes. your pads will last longer, your water faucet repairs, your clothes will be like your, your, your detergent, your laundry. Your detergent on dishes, on clothes. He brought all that up. What about bottled water? But, well, that's what he we spend more than six dollars. I think your net the net is going to be a saving because you're spending about twenty to twenty five on those things, and you'll be using tap water for everything. It's what happens if you get the loan and they don't give you the grant? You're stuck with it. Oh no! Did it guarantee you can get oh, the yeah. grant? It's a done. No, the grant's a done deal with the co funding letter. The then way what it's, do we need the loan for? The, the way it's set up, we have to have a loan to to, to secure the two hundred and twenty three thousand dollars that we have, which is CDBG funds. And when we had our public meetings, it was discussed in there what we wanted to use these for. The, the majority of the people wanted to go with the RO system. With that RO system, we had uh, water tank repairs, we had water lines, we had the fire lines to put in. So we had options to go with, which were all listed on so there. So we can use, in order not to lose, so we don't lose no. But yeah, that's what we thought. Okay. That's what we thought. But Kathy from ADOH advised us no, because we we specified <coughs> the RO system, so it has to and be if, for that. if we don't secure backing, one way or the other, with grant funding or with a loan, we will lose the two hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars from CDBG money. And that's a, and that's a grant as well, right? So yes. Okay. So it's the balance of the RO project. It's, it's a combination of the loan and grant. So you're not, the, the question that you're losing the grant and you get into a loan won't. Actually, I'm going to activate my own well. I don't care. <laughs> well, and you know, it's, it's not something that we can do our, our overall expense was going to be $600,000. And that is with all of the repairs. He just got through saying we only need 300000 yeah. For the RO system. Yeah. yeah. But you're just going over the board. So in other words, we might not need the $6. Oh, I don't think you will, but, but I, I, I think I don't want to. I've been saying the $6, and I don't want to say it's 450 and then come back here in six months and it's 5.5 or something. And if you borrow 600 and only can only use 300 you only You only, okay. yeah, and, and yeah. Yeah, so it would be drawn as you use it. It's not a, a line of it's not it's not that you get six hundred thousand and you own a loan. It's it's you would start and that's why there's opportunity to, to get the USDA money, okay, and minimize the use of the loan funds. And it's along very, with the rate increase. It's very, very possible. What was that? Along with the rate increase. Yes, and that would be a public hearing on the rate. It's very possible. That we could secure the loan for six hundred thousand and never use a penny. That's fine. Awesome. It might not ever come to a public. No, Liz, when you, when you got your ten dollars in your pocket, I only need five. You're gonna spend that other five. It can't. Uh, it can't. You get six hundred thousand. We only need three hundred thousand. And you got an extra three hundred thousand to play with. It's gonna be spent somewhere. It it can't be done because it's monitored very closely, Joe. No, everything would come forward for approval. I mean, there's no there's, uh, the, the, the bid package for the R, that's going to be about 190000 That would come back. Here are the bids. Here's who's won that bid. That's the same as you just saw. Yeah, we have, we have no receipts or nothing. Oh, yeah. all, all respect, everything we've been involved in, if we presented the cost and it's been approved, and that's how this whole program would be administered. But there will be a bid package for the RO. And then a big package for the, the building that houses the yard. The other option is to continue drinking water out. We have an amount. Of, scrap the project, lose the ground, and, and well, you know, the water keep water drinking. Water is just fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, from a health standpoint, that's true, but it's it's difficult to drink. Okay, that's that's the honest statement. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's not going to hurt anyone or harm anyone health wise. I know, but but you can't drink it. Okay, I mean that's, we know that. That's why we're doing the project. Nothing wrong with except a little rest. Could they procure a, a construction loan for the okay. 250? You're looking at 250 to 300, right? right? So why doesn't the town get a loan construction type loan? 
Well, WIFA does those and they got denied, and that's exactly, we're calling it a municipal loan. So we're right back to the audit situation. Well, on the, I guess WIFA is probably a year away, okay, which is Water Infrastructure Finance Authority of Arizona, just with, and we, we will, you know, work through them. Is the so audit holding you up? On the WIFA side, it's not the audit, it's right now the prior statements have, you know, things they don't, they won't look at, it's like, um, an analogy is, hey, if I want to buy a car from you and you're a dealer, if I have a bankruptcy, you're not going to be In loan. other words, they okay, won't just consider it. They won't even. Yeah. Okay, and I'm just, yeah. I, 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 so, I, so I think we can work through it, but it's going to take a year to, to get there. Don doesn't have control of those records when we came into our initiative. This is, these are four years plus, and so I think we need to shift, you know, we'll work to shift okay. the focus. Just take one more question, and then we'll move on. Yeah. Just one more question. Sure. Sorry. Is, if you guys did a, a projection of how much revenue will be generated by increasing everyone's water bill six dollars a month oh, oh, yeah. for the annual, so you yeah, guys that's know how, how much money you'll yeah, be making. That's when the rates have been analyzed. Okay. Absolutely. And that's going to be in a report, so the town knows exactly. Yeah, the yeah. and I think the intent, if, if, if the council approves the loan, then we'll have a public hearing within the next thirty days for the rate increase. Okay. Thank you. So what do we need right now? We need a motion to approve. Uh, hold on. What? So what, what is it we need out? We need a motion to. Well, I think we we want a uh, yeah. special hearing, a special yeah. hearing on that. Yeah. Oh, move to a special hearing. No, yeah. Basically, this is kind of a two-part thing. Yeah. I'm going to ask one more question. Oh, hold on, we can put it Procedurally, this is this is basically where you are. Um, the, to make the loan application, they would like a resolution. We did not get it till today. It's not on the agenda. We cannot act on it. We would want to request a special meeting on Monday to approve a resolution for a loan application. You're not borrowing any money. You're making an application. But they want a resolution that goes along with it. Before it, it will be any monies will be borrowed from a lender. In this case, it would be Wells Fargo as the agency. It would come to the council in a public hearing. It would be discussed. The terms would be made available to the council members. The council members would the council would either vote by a majority either to approve or not approve at that you know accept entering into that loan. So you're just basically giving a resolution at you know you know wanting to make the application to borrow the money. The rate study issue that you're looking at. The statutes in Arizona basically require first of all you have to, you have to do a rate study. The rate study has to be available to the public at least 30 days prior to a notice of hearing. The notice of this is a public hearing basically where you basically give notice of an intent to increase the water rates in this case. And so basically it's a 60-day process that report. The study has to be available to the public 30 days before the public hearing. The public hearing occurs and the council can vote to adopt those rates, but they will not be effective until 30 days later after, you know, after, that, public, after that hearing. So that's basically in a nutshell how, how it works. I'll take one more question and then we'll go on to later. Will our 50-year-old water lines be able to handle this new clean water? There is a, we've done, we'll an, we know, we've done an analysis of the chemistry and this is not a full but our water our lines are 50 years right. old around here. And Absolutely. Rust and some of them is closing up. Absolutely. And, and so what will start happening is there will be a, and the startup, there will be a blend chemistry. Okay, and we've already calculated that. So what's the acceptable blend ratio so we don't disturb the pipes or cause excessive corrosion. There will be some flushing involved. We've talked to Mr. Garcia about that when it comes online. So if, if you all remember what happened in Tucson, yeah. okay, and that, that's, that's one of our specialties. It's, it's not going to happen. It's a water chemistry issue. So you don't do full RO. There's a, a couple of things. One, there are some minerals and stuff that are healthy in the water. Okay, so we're not going to take all those, strip all of them out. Okay, there'll be a portion of those left, and it'll be blended back, and we'll treat about 200 gallons, 200 to 220. Okay, that also helps the chemistry so we don't scour the pipes and send it into your tap, which is what happened in the Tucson, if people remember, about 20 years ago. And that was and one of the first see. questions that was brought yeah, up. Yeah. We brought up I see a lot of busted water lines coming up. Okay. Uh, it won't, it won't on. bust, because the pressure and all that won't change. Yeah. Okay. There'll be no change in the operating pressure of the system. Okay. Let's take one more question. Let's get going, because we've got it. Well, how come, how come you guys are raising our, going to raise the water bill? When are you getting grants and funds and loans? Why are you raising our, our water bill? 
it, it's about 50% funded with the grants. Okay, so well, the why audience, should we have to pay for it? Why should we have to pay for that? We don't have to have the RO system. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that can be in the in the public hearing, and if the public doesn't want that, then well, they need to want. fix up the finances here before they start getting us in another debt. You know, that's what needs to be done here. And that's we thought it was going to be free, Rome, well, to start yeah. with. Remember, two years ago, you were bought it free. Free's a good price. Free's a good price. <laughs> yeah, that's costing us. No, but last, no, last August I said it's going to be about, I think the question was asked, about $6 There's a month. no financial trouble. The, we already, this is the third time I'm going to tell you that we do not have the, the previous administration, we do not have the, the records so auditors can continue. They won't continue. Our audits, which aren't in order, they won't continue. So that's, You've been here 24 years, you said, and you, you don't know, you didn't know all this stuff was happening? <laughs> I Come just on. told you, I knew. There does, it, it's out of our control. Do you understand? Oh, no, I don't understand. You go. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah. Old business, item six. Are you through, Rob? Um, okay, so if, I guess if, I don't know if with the procedure, so we're looking for a special meeting Monday to discuss the location. Okay. Well, Submitted and that'll be going on. Yeah. And, and Mayor, I realize that this has been a little lengthy item, but the rate, the, the rate study. When do you believe? That, I mean, when, if the rates had to be increased in the council vote, what time frame or do you think is necessary to do this? About two weeks. Once. I mean, to start the notice of the notice of intent. To, about two weeks to. Because that has to be available, correct? Yes. So I would do the notice after two weeks after. Because that has to be available for a 30 year period. Yes. So we've got 45 days from the hearing. So, yeah. we would, as soon as the reports are, as soon as this report is going to be made available, one of the things that they would do is basically you would have a motion to basically have a public hearing with regards to the issues of, of the rate study in this case. And the components of the rate study basically will be what it's going to cost to operate the system because it's going to take additional electricity. There are filters, there are chemicals, and there are supplies there. And also, one of the components, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that they try to build in some reserve there so that these things can be fixed there. So if you if you basically, if you don't have money set aside to keep upkeep, as soon as the filters go out, you don't have the money to replace the filters. And that's one of the reasons for doing a rate study, to make sure that basically that you are recovering enough money to operate the system. Okay, can we hold the talking about we can't hear our chair to talk with them? To operate the system and set enough of a capital reserve so that you can make the repairs and maintenance on the system. So those will be like three items. Um, you would basically what you would do is you would be directing this. You'd be directing the staff to set up. You know, one when as soon as the report is available, to basically have a notice of here a notice of a public hearing on this 30 days after the report has been delivered, and then there would be a discussion whether or not then. Council wants to adopt and modify the water rates, which would occur 30 days after. Okay. Mayor, I have one more question. Would you be here on It's my understanding that they're scheduling this about five o'clock. It's there. I have a city council meeting anyway at six, but if you got a phone line, I'll be there telephonically. Okay. Just a, a couple of things uh, <laughs> we did meet. Uh, I need the ATT reference here, on, and there's a little bit different strategy on that. We're, we've decided to to do a co-funding on the storage tank rehabs, uh, and we will have more details to install uh, additional structural members on the tanks to support the new towers. Open it up to Verizon and other carriers, uh, but it would require. Uh, the way we're proceeding is it would require some structural enhancements on the tank, but we need to rehab the tanks anyway. So as part of the tank rehab, get some cost share from AT&T on that. So it's a little bit different approach than we discussed before. Uh, uh, so any question on AT&T is going to help you set up a power for Verizon? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the goal here, well, we work, right now you have AT&T service. We want to modify the contract so you can bring other carriers and get other revenues into the town. Okay. So right now there's six holes on there. Okay. AT&T would like to have 12, a total of 12, but uh, we 
the initial design we didn't approve as your representative. Um, so they went, had a proposal to go off the tank and build a separate tower uh, on the property. But because of the terrain and the cost, and that is not a feasible option. Okay, so now we're going to come back onto the tanks, but the whole top of it will be redesigned structurally um, to accommodate AT&T, but also Verizon, T-Mobile, who else are correct to right? so it could be an integrated facility, but it'll be part of the tank rehab with a contribution for the rehab costs from AT&T. So as we work out those details, that's the direction we're going in. We'll present those in the future. So like one tank rehab right now is about 140,000 approximately. We have those tanks. So there'll be a, a portion of that that we request the cost from the to pay put the additional six holes on. Will ATT do a boost signal to how much now? I don't know. You know that? I'm sorry. What's the new RF signal strength? Um, it's gonna, and it's gonna propel you to make cleaner calls, and also it will enhance uh, 911 calling, and it will also enable you to receive better data service as well. Thank you. <coughs> and okay, any other questions on the tank? Okay. And then we're proceeding with the drainage improvements. That is. Uh, uh, survey will be going on next week, and then our goal is to complete that design um, by the end of November, and then it will be into construction, and that's fully funded for construction of $300,000, so 100% uh, grant, so <laughs> that's on the good news. Um, so anyway, I hopefully uh, look forward to the meeting on Monday, and then we can discuss the rest of the Okay, thank you, man. Okay, sorry, I think so, huh? Mm -hmm. well, I have seven new business discussion and action on the following. A day from uh, Dean information on Patsy. I just wanted to share that with the council. It's very important, I think, when we have nice things say about us, and especially the planning and zoning. Um, she was very appreciative of that, so I, I wanted to, the council to uh, notice as well. Thank you, Dan, for working at the I enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, we'll go to item 7B, approval to hold a STEM fair at the Community Center, October 16, 17, and 18. We're really excited at the library. We've been able to obtain two grants, <coughs> one from the Arizona State Library and one from the Saddlebrook Outreach Program, a total of $2,500. With that, we have purchased STEM-related um, games and projects and um, technology, wonderful technology. Um, we've got the Sphero Balls, a little robotic ball that's controlled with a tablet or a smartphone. And we've downloaded so far um, 11 apps. You can play golf with it. You can do all kinds of neat stuff. It's really awesome. We got a 3D printer. Um, we have our volunteer, Johnny Johnson, who is actually putting it together. We paid $429 for a 3D printer kit. The printer, once it's put together, um, the same exact printer sells for $1,200. So we're really increasing our prof profit margin on that just by using our money for a kit instead of the actual printer and having the having the option to have somebody as knowledgeable as Johnny to um, volunteer to put it together for us. So that's really great. Um, we, I know you guys have already had your fill of Legos. We have purchased uh, 3,000 pieces of Legos. <laughs> and, uh, and, and all of this to come together, and there's much more stuff. Um, a list too long to list here. Um, we're going to have I believe it's 11 different stations. Um, I've got volunteers lined up. Every volunteer is taking home um, their individual project and mastering it so that as the kids rotate from table to table, they don't have to read instructions. They have an adult there to say, this is what we do. Let's get going. And so what we would like to do, what we're requesting from the town council, we actually want to close the library on the 16th, 17th, and 18th of October. Um, it's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The, the children in Salmonwell and Mammoth 
have an early release day. The children in Hayden are actually on a fall break. So we will have access to all the children in the community. And we're wanting from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock to hold the STEM fair at the community center and close the library and have it at the community center so we have that open space and room and we're wanting to um, hand out flyers through the school. We've already discussed it with the school, got the number of flyers we have to print out. So that we actually want direct involvement from all the schools, not just the Mammoth School, but the Mammoth School, the Samuel Schools, and the Hayden Schools, because that's where all of our children go, is those three different school systems. And um, this, these are projects that will enrich their lives. They can explore engineering through um, different block play. They can explore the technology because we've got some really awesome, the Makey Makey, it's mind blowing. You guys have to Google that. I mean, you plug in a USB port, plug in some alligator clips and bring up a piano on your, um, your computer and plug your alligator clips into say bananas and you can use the bananas as a keyboard. It's an amazing thing. So um, those, those three days, we're wanting to present it to all the children and then after the STEM fair, they'll be available in the library during business hours for the kids to use anytime they want to. So. That uh, Thursday doesn't uh, the senior citizens. It it does, but you know what? I talked to them and they were all for the children. So okay. Awesome. So we need a motion to win. I have a question first. Read the letter of the hours for this. From one to four, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. <coughs> Okay, we have motions. So order. Okay, I have motion by Councilman and uh, Medina to approve the stem of the community center 16, 17, and 18. Second? Second by Councilman Marshall. All in favor of motion? Aye. Motion approved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sounds good. Item 7C. All right. Adopt. Um, 2014-15 salaries and wages, resolution 2014-06. I normally present this with our budget. I just I did not do it this year. This is exactly the same uh, uh, scale as last year. Um, but uh, the public works director, the police chief, and myself are still at a 5% reduction. Um, we, we've put our guys back to work at 40 hours, but... Um, I wanted to get council approval that we uh, we get our. Uh, but that's on the wage. Yeah, it, it the the wage is on here. Uh, you know, all, everything is here. And incidentally, this is the one that got published in the paper. So, <coughs> is there any questions on this? No questions. Any motion to approve? Uh, so ordered on resolution 2014-06. Motion by Council Medina to approve resolution 2014-6. I have a second on that. Second. Second by Councilman Gallego. All favor motion? Aye. So motion passes. Point of seven B. Approve for quality of life. Uh the approval. You can do the full council vote for that pass up. Yeah, there's no nose. No. Thank you, council members, for this opportunity. I know you've bounced it around for a while. Uh, I really feel there's, there's a lot of people doing good things. Seniors, our library is active again. Uh, so what I'd like to try and do is try and coordinate all these efforts, strictly volunteer so that we don't have any uh, finances and that sort of thing involved. Just, you know, for example, like with the wild power park, to use that as an example. Okay, I'm going to go up and work on the park today. Who wants to join me? So there's no, but what I'm looking for is councils okay on this because it would kind of involve working with the police department for uh, security checks or welfare checks, seeing how they want to handle that. Uh, the seniors have already got something started with that anyway. And also for public works, especially like who is a meme that does a lot of the landscaping. So would you like us to, is this, if this is all right, the plan would be that if we have a specific project like that, to come to council with perhaps details 
code, we could specifically ask you for assistance from public works or from the police department, that sort of thing. So looking for your permission to kind of move forward with this and discuss it and get more details. Do you need a mo uh, I don't think you need a motion to move forward. I think everybody, there's no negative, everybody agrees. So I guess just come to the council whenever you need something. Okay, fine. So it's okay with you that if we approach the police department for something that we may need, but we do need to come back and double check that we need to be sure it's okay? Yes. Okay, and likewise with Public Works. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, and before I forget, we have a wonderful little addition to planning and zoning, so I'm going to turn over the next item to her. And Sharon has done wonders for our library, and before she was even on board with us, she was getting us organized so that others can understand what's going on with our cleanup projects. Okay. So I'd like to introduce uh, Sharon Christensen. Um, I think Diane gave you all a, a short example of what I've been putting together. My goal is to make a master file of all the properties that Planning and Zoning is working on in concern with the Quality of Life program. Um, we'd like to target the top 10 properties that are more run down than others that are there is no chance of them being fixed in the next two years. And those we want to want to target first, um, get them cleaned up. They are a hazard to our community and to our residents. They promote rodents. They promote wildlife in them, and they're unsecure. Um, so that's one of the things we want to start. The way I want to go about it is by organizing these files. And I gave you a, a short example of what the master file would look like, which would be basically the properties and the owners. The individual files will contain any contact information that we make through the lawyers' letters being sent out, uh, pictures that have been taken, the first day of contact, what we've done, whether we've gotten um, comments back from those owners, whether we've gotten returned mail saying that they're not going to work with or, or whatever that circumstance is, that we have it all in one spot, not here and there, and I would like to utilize the cloud for that so that we're not all having to be in the same place at the same time. Um, the second page that you were given was a basic layout of how each property would show, and it will list all the property information at the top, any contact information, any letters that have been sent out, and anything that we've gotten returned from the owners. The bottom will show all the violations that we are going after, what we want done. And then I, I will be up to um, the, the process to go further on that. But from what we've been able to see so far, everybody has a little piece of the information and it's not all contained in one spot. And that is basically what I've been asked to do. And so this is pretty much what you'll see from us then. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. She said that we're given an item. We don't have any of that stuff. Diane sent it. I, I, gave, uh, I gave them what Diane sent to me. Oh, oh well, okay. It's, uh, it was a separate sheet for... I have a copy. Yeah, I have a copy real quick if you want to just take a look at what it will look like. Um, yeah. No, I, I gave them two... two Pieces of uh, information. Oh, okay. So they don't have the. We don't have right now. No. I think it's up to me. You want to do this one or? Should I make the copies? Sure. Yeah, that one has the master sheet and the other ones. Yeah, it, yes, and the, the ones that's up right now, they are active properties, but this is basically a dummy file just to, to see if they can pass with anybody's idea of what's going to happen. I'm not a 
motion by Councilman Barcel and a second by Councilman Gallego to table 7K, the K9 demonstration. 7F. 7F. Uh, all in favor of motion? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we'll go ahead and table that motion. We'll go to 7G. Surrey New Plan and Zoning Member Share. to the best of my ability, so help me God. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, item 7H. Recognize employees of the month of Patsy Nash and Dale Um <laughs> Council, I think we've had um, some, some issues with um, some of maybe uh, the morale of some of our employees. Um, so the uh, the three of us met and decided that we would like, we, um, a few months ago, we stopped having our uh, uh, potlucks. So I think we just kind of drifted apart. So we're trying to get that started up again. And uh, we, we have decided to go with two employees of the month. And what we would like to do is, um, have uh, maybe the newspaper come down and take some pictures of our of our employees maybe at work or whatever. Uh, we would like these employees recognized and we want a new employee every month recognized. And uh, so what I would like to do is ask the council to allow us to give them um, an, a $25 gift certificate to a restaurant of their choice here in Mammoth or a store of their choice you know, it's something small, but it's recognizing the employee. Um, I, I don't have any employees uh, this time, but I think uh, Mr. Garcia and Chief Nash have employees that they would, the two employees that we would like to recognize. And they would become employees of the month, but up month of October. So you want us to go ahead and vote to, to give a certificate to every employee of the month, is it? I, I would like that very much, but if you'd like to hear each of them kind of give you a, a description of their employees and why they chose them as the employee of the month, I think that would be very um, appropriate here. Mayor, before we do that, I would like to see is there written criteria because in all fairness, um, all employees should have, okay, this is what we're going to do, we're going to have, which was already in place because we put that in when we first got elected to honor an employee, but then also we need the criteria so that everybody knows, okay, this is why I was selected. Not just because, okay, you know, he did this today, so we're gonna pick him. I think in all fairness, just like in school, you know, you have to know why, what you have to do to get selected. And I, I agree with you. We have not made up that, um, the list yet, but I, I think that you'll be very happy on the employees that they have chosen, and I think they're very outstanding employees. Um, it, I've got one question on the potluck. Uh, when is this going to be held? 
It's going to be held, uh, the next one will be, I think, the third, the third of October. On the work day, right? Yes. And how long would this potluck going to last? It, Four hours, two hours, one hour? It normally lasts, uh, for most of them, an hour. Uh, the girls and I usually take a little longer because we usually are the ones that are left to clean up. But well, without the employees, I'm going to be up there for one hour. That's, that's fine. But we're going to be up there for four hours. I mean, that's fine. That's a stretch. That's not yeah, No, no, they wouldn't be here that long. And we had even d talked about um, having it the last hour just before the guys go home. You know. Well, that's um, good. You know, so, you know, if they wanted to stay a little yeah. later, they could do that, but um, it's um, it's going to be up to, I will consult with uh, with Mr. Garcia and Chief Nash, and we'll come up with something. Okay, Steve, I know. Uh, I nominated this back to Marie Reedhead. Uh, she is just uh, an outstanding worker. She actively looks for everything in the office to make sure that nothing is left undone. I've never worked with an employee like her before and I am just uh, extremely impressed with her work ethic. And she's very busy. Uh, always at work on time, uh, never misses a day. So that's that's my daughter. Okay. I've nominated, um, I picked, I selected Jesus Chavez. He has a can-do attitude. No job is too big or too small for him. I believe Jesus has about 10 years of service or more with the town. He recently remodeled the town's building for the new meat market. He was the lead person. Uh, Jesus builds our sidewalks. He's currently working on a sidewalk and drainage project on Galero Street. Um, he built the stairs at Isidro Reese Park. Um, when I was asking him to build the stairs at Cedar Reese Park, he let me know that he previously built the stairs and the handrails at the cemetery. You know, so he built some like those at Cedar Reese. He is also a highly skilled equipment operator. Mr. Chavez is a very good all-around employee. He has many skills at which he can do at or above contractor level work. I consider him a valuable asset to the Public Works Department. Is the public invited on the potluck? <laughs> Just for money. Yeah. No. <laughs> the town the doesn't pay any part of this. We all just pitch together. So, uh, you know, that's going to be the next question. No, we, we take care of our own. <laughs> okay. So we'll go to item number uh, Okay, so you wanted a motion to approve the gift certificate for all the. Yes, and, and we would like for it to be up to the employee what place they would like to have their gift certificate from. You know, if, if they want it from the Circle K or the, or the Corker or one of the restaurants, I, I think it should be open to them as to where they want it. Okay, so I need a motion for So ordered. A motion by uh, Ms. Gina Medina is going to approve the $25 gift certificate for all the employees that have gone from now. A second by... A second. By Councilman Gray. Uh, since he's my brother, not, I don't have to abstain because it's for everybody, right? Or should I abstain? It really doesn't matter. Um, Mayor, given the fact that there's a $25 gratuity there, I would suggest you to make the better part of discretion to pay you by Okay, so uh, all in favor of motion? Aye. And I'm staying from this uh, voting, so we have a sixth motion passes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Go to item eight, executive session. We need to go to executive session. Uh, Mayor, I was, I was asked to basically try to make an agenda for basically discussion of the issue of, uh, well, not the issue, but basically the position of interim chief of police, and I was trying to guess every potential possibility, but there is an executive session there if either you or the interim chief requests that, that if not you, if no one requests that you can certainly discuss this regular session. Did you 
you want to go into executive session? Yeah. It's up to you guys. I, I have no preference. I make a motion to go into executive session. Okay, I have a motion for the council members all to go ahead and go into the session. Executive session that includes by the council, Steve, and the third and the chair. And for how long? For how long? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Uh, the employees involved, are they allowed to go in the judge's list? Yes, I do. Okay. The motion includes the interim chief to be in charge of the session. So I have a second of the motion. I'll second. Second of the motion. I'll second of the motion. We'll go in uh, second of the session for 20 minutes and then we'll come back. Continue with me. Back into regular session, now we'll go to item 9, continuation of new business. Do we have a motion on the second session action? Yes. I would, uh, if we agreed, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Nash to resign and go back to his regular yeah. position effectively tonight. Or to, well, tomorrow at 5 o'clock, that's the thing that Then um, I would like to appoint as an interim chief, Martin McIntosh. Then I would also like to advertise as soon as possible to hire a new police chief. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Mayor, Council, Council Member Barcelo, um, uh, just so we're clear, you said about three things there in the motion. First of all, okay. there, first of all, there was no agreement. Okay. It, there was there was no agreement in executive session. This matter before you basically is interim chief. Previously, you appointed. Uh, Chief Nash is your interim chief of police. Interim means temporary until a permanent chief of police is appointed. You would not require a resignation or action. And basically what the council would do is that you would either vote to either to appoint a new interim chief of police. If the vote is successful, meaning the majority of the council vote, then that person would be the new interim chief. If the vote is not successful, meaning that there are no votes that are there, uh, interim chief Nash would remain your interim chief for, you know, for the time being. That's the, that is the one item there. So there basically is no issue about whether consent or anything. That issue basically it's up to the council to decide whether they want to appoint someone else to be interim chief of police. Thereafter, basically the council would direct the town manager basically to uh, advertise for the filling of the position of chief of police. So then I make a motion to hire the manager. I mean, you would make a motion to appoint an interim chief of police. So with that, I make a motion that we appoint an interim chief, Marty McIntosh. The advertisement that we did to That will be after that, will be after, after, after take this out. Okay, so, can you have a motion to move for this year? I have a motion by who? Councilman and Barcel will make a motion. Okay. And it's and been seconded by Councilman. Our favorite motion? Aye. 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 Uh, roll call. Councilwoman Wickham? No. Councilman Barcelo? Yes. Councilman Gallego? Yes. Mayor Barcelo? Yes. Councilman Brewer? No. Councilman Romero? Yes. Vice Mayor Medina? Yes. yes. <coughs> Motion passed. Now we'll go to the second and, and my, understanding, my understanding is the motion that that is effective immediately. Yes, sir. What is the second motion? Second motion to advertise for chief. Oh, and I make a motion that we advertise to hire a new police chief. I'm um, Patsy's discretion. And, and to, for Patsy to advertise at her discretion. Good. A motion that? I made the motion. Mm -hmm. second. A second. Oh, I'm sorry. Second by Council of Medina. On favor of motion? Aye. 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 Uh, roll call, Pat. Uh, Councilwoman Wickham? No. Councilman Barcelo? Yes. Councilman Gallego? Yes. Neil you know Barcelo? Yes. Councilman Brewer? No. Councilman Romero? Yes. Vice Mayor Medina? Yes. Okay, with that, we'll go to item 10. Motion to adjourn. So ordered at 8.45.
Can we motion by Council Member Medina to adjourn a second on that? Second by Council Member Medina. All in favor, motion? Aye. 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 Aye.